The first presentation is titled Topic-Based Service Discovery for Ethereum Peer-to-Peer -Peer Network. It looks like Onur Askajil from Lancaster University will be the one presenting this. So I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you. So this is uh, joint work with Michal, Sergi, Etienne, and Felix. Um, the talk is about a discovery system for Ethereum. So quick outline. Um, first going to give a brief overview of the Ethereum ecosystem. Then I'll um, introduce a topic-based method for discovery. And then I'll go through the objectives and challenges of a discovery system in an open decentralized system like Ethereum. And then we'll quickly present our proposed um, discovery system and then conclude the talk. So Ethereum is one of the largest permissionless blockchain. Um, it's home to Ether cryptocurrency. It supports Turing complete smart contracts and Ethereum ecosystem is not about just the mainnet and the Ether. Obviously there are many of these decentralized applications. According to a recent study, there are close to 4,000 of them, and they, they vary in terms of popularity, which means that the adoption of each application, uh, the number of uh, peers adopting each application can, can uh, differ a lot. Um, it's highly desirable for peers running an application to form a dedicated application-specific peer-to-peer network among, among themselves, this is basically to confine the dissemination of application specific messages like event notifications. So we have a general uh, large Ethereum network, which is um, unstructured actually. And then we have um, a discovery system where we uh, have, where we build um, separate peer to peer networks between nodes that are running the same applications. Here, the colors in this picture corresponds to an application. So any node who wants to join a target application's network must find an, a peer that is already part of this network. And this picture is a bit misleading because um, a node actually can be part of multiple applications. The objective of uh, discovery system is basically for peers to establish application level connections. Um, the existing discovery system of Ethereum uses a brute force, brute force approach where uh, nodes uh, perform random walks. Basically, a node picks, picks a random ID, a destination ID, and because the uh, because there's the nodes are arranged in a distributed hash table, a DHT, uh, it uses a built-in DHT uh, get method to efficiently find uh, nodes closest to a random ID, and along the random walk. Uh, with the nodes that you encounter, you perform a handshake to find out which application uh, this other node supports. And if two nodes support the same application, then uh, they can actually uh, form a connection. But this random um, brute force approach is problematic uh, for two reasons. It's, uh, it's slow for peers to find others for unpopular applications where there are not too many peers. And also it's, uh, there are these unnecessary handshakes between nodes that are not even running, this, running the same application. And what we propose instead is uh, a topic-based discovery. Um, again, we have a DHT, but unlike the previous approach uh, where we didn't really take advantage of the structure of a DHT, uh, here we can do that. Um, basically um, nodes to be able to uh, to, be, to be discovered, a node must register itself with other nodes. This is called registering an ad or advertisement. Um, and nodes, nodes uh, advertise themselves under um, specific topics. And the topic is basically uh, a pseudonym for an application. And all nodes in the system uh, must assume the following roles. Um, as a registrar role, you store advertisements not only for your own topic, but for all the topics in the network. And you store the ads in a topic table. Uh, it's indexed by topic and it's a list of node records. I'll have an example of a, um, ad registration in the next slide. As an advertiser who wants to be discovered, you register your ads with other nodes. And as a searcher who is just trying to join or you're trying to reestablish or you're trying to um, form new connections because your existing connections are, are gone. 
you uh, try to find other nodes that are listed under uh, specific topics. So as an example, um, here node 15 is trying to register an ad, um, basically provides its own node record and a desired topic ID. A node record is basically a node's identifier, its connect connectivity information, like IP address and port number, and some other security related stuff. It's important to note here that the topic table is a shared resource that is shared across all the topics and it has a limited size. So it's important to secure this resource. Um, ads, when they're registered, they eventually expire after some number of seconds. Um, this is because we don't want to keep persistent ads in the network because in an open system, um, people can join and leave. Quick overview of the Ethereum DHT um, before I move on. Um, it's based on Kademlia. Um, node IDs are just a short hashed form of nodes public key. Um, and the distance between two IDs is the length of their common prefix. And you can map any data item or topic uh, to this DHT ID space by, by hashing it. And based on the distance metric, each node, um, each DHT node can actually form a routing table where peers are um, organized by their distance to the source node. So but the peers in this bucket have a distance of one with the source node who is maintaining the routing table. The last bucket, let's say this is the bucket five in this example, actually has the peers whose distance is at least five. So distance five and more for the last one. And Ethereum DHT has built in get and put functionality, uh, efficient uh, routing uh, mechanism with, uh, with, uh, with a limited number of steps. Uh, and you can find efficiently nodes uh, closest to a, a target ID. Next, I'll go through objectives and challenges. Um, one objective is um, an important one, it's the security, but uh, to explain this, to first explain uh, this application level connection concept. In Ethereum, each peer maintains a total of 50 connection slots. Uh, some of them are initiated outbound, these connections, so, and some of them are inbound. And this, these uh, small number of connection slots need to be pro protected from um, eclipsing attacks because in an eclipsing attack, an, ad an adversary, uh, uh, together with its sibyls, uh, monopolizes the connections of a victim. And once it achieves this, it, uh, the adversary can feed the victim any information it wants. Um, and there are some existing work um, to prevent eclipsing attacks, uh, but I'm not going, going, going to go into details. Um, some of these approaches we actually also use in our work. Um, so security is an important uh, objective um, and adversaries have multiple reasons to attack the discovery system. One is for financial gain, because uh, for instance, once you eclipse a node, you can then launch subsequent attacks like double spending attacks. Um, another reason could be to block or slow down the discovery for some competing applications. Um, the objectives are therefore to to have a discovery system that works under a Byzantine environment and limits the impact of Sybils. In an open decentralized system, nodes can just create Sybils at no cost. Um, some related challenges. Um, so uh, one example attack is to prevent, uh, one challenge is to prevent malicious registrars. Um, a malicious registrar can basically uh, ignore ad registrations or lookups as part of a denial of service attack. Or a more powerful attack would be to return bogus or targeted results. So for instance, to a lookup request, an adversary can just return a list of uh, records of Sybils that it generated as part of an eclipse, eclipse attack. Also, um, nodes can place their Sybils at strategic locations in the DHT to increase the impact of the attack so that they're discoverable easier. Malicious advertisers, on the other hand, can similarly generate a pool of Sybils and then spam the uh, other, spam other nodes with lots of registrations. One possible solution to this is a proof of work scheme, like uh, have, have the 
have the advertisers here uh, solve a puzzle and consume some resources. But this is also not a, not a very desirable solution because you give unfair advantage to re resource rich nodes. Um, in general, proof of work um, has this kind of disadvantage. Um, remaining objectives are having a load balanced, lightweight, and fast discovery. Um, so load balance means that there's similar overhead across all the nodes. So we don't want, want any hotspots in the network. Um, you also would like a lightweight mechanism for registration uh, in terms of messaging or state maintenance for um, existing or ongoing registrations. And we would like to have a fast discovery. So once you register an ad, you want to be able to, you want to be discovered fast. A related question to these is how do you find the right subset of uh, registrars to send advertisements to and the right subset of nodes to search, to send search queries to, so that these two sets actually intersect and meet at common nodes. Uh, two solutions uh, I'll describe here. Um, one is the using the DHT uh, built-in put and get. Here we have a topic ID mapped here into the DHT space and um, regi both registrations and lookups will basically go directly to the nodes closest to the topic hash. This approach is fast for search, um, fast for discovery, discovery, but it's easy to attack because uh, symbols can be just placed close to the topic hash. Also, it introduces hotspots. For instance, if this topic is a very popular one, then these nodes closest to this topic hash will be very busy. Random placement, uh, the one I just described before with a random walk, it's difficult to attack because nodes, Sybil, uh, nodes won't know where to place their Sybils because you just randomly search. It also gives you good load balancing property, but it's also not uh, fast to do search because especially for unpopular applications, it might take a while uh, to find peers. So I'll go through two main research questions uh, as part of my proposed discovery system, but I'll uh, talk about these uh, one by one. Um, so the first question is how do you achieve a good load balancing? And then how do you secure the discovery mechanism while keeping the ad registrations lightweight? And ideally the discovery system must continue operating under heavy presence of Sybils. Our approach is basically a hybrid of the DHT put and get operations and random placement. So what we do is we uh, form a topic oriented bucket organization in, in to the routing table. So we call this a registration table where the peers are organized by their distance to the topic cache, not to the distance, not the distance from this node. And, uh, and then we combine this uh, bucket organization together with intra bucket random ad placement. So let me describe with the search first on this figure. So for search, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, sorry. We, we are right at the 15 minute mark. So <laughs> if you're able to uh, sum it up in about a minute, that would be great. Sorry for interrupting. Sure. sure. No problem. So this for the search, uh, we start from the farthest bucket and do some random search here, random walk. And then with encountered nodes, we search on these nodes. If we have enough results, we move on to the next bucket and so on. And this approach actually gives you good load balancing while keeping this randomness, uh, it's, which is good for security. And for the admission mechanism uh, for the attacks against topic table, advertisers send their uh, information and then we compute a waiting time and place this in a ticket. And then the advertiser must wait for the duration of this waiting time and then come back and then they might be admitted. Their advertisement might be admitted. And the waiting time is based on a diversity of this advertiser, its IP address and ID from the contents of the topic table of the registrar. So that, that's the main idea of how to protect against Sybils because Sybils tend to come from small number of IP addresses, for instance. Uh, it's just a sample of the, our results. We have more detailed results, and this is an ongoing work, not published yet. Um, but uh, looking at the number of registrations in a simulation where 20% of nodes are Sybils, the red bars actually show the, the successful registrations by Sybils, and a large proportion of the 
uh, registrations are by other honest nodes. And the topics are from most popular to least popular here. And but the attacks against least popular topic is, is a bit more effective. These individual bars are for different number of IP pools that attackers have when they're uh, launching the civil attacks. And I, I guess I'll, I'll just finish it here. Um, and I'm out of time. Thank you very much.